Hello guys, uh, welcome to my session on Servlets JSP using Spring Boot. Uh, so today in this session we are going to talk about uh, uh, how to deploy the Servlets and JSPs uh, using a Spring Boot application and what, the what are the different dependencies also used uh, as part of this application and the structure of the web application when integrating with Spring Boot. So this is a typical uh, flow diagram for uh, any of the web application, uh, like as as I said, we are going to discuss about uh, JSPs and servlets, and uh, typically this we are going to deploy in a in a Spring Boot application. So here, uh, if you see, like we have a browser or any client uh, talking to the controller, and this is a servlet, and uh, the servlet layer uh, talks to the uh, service layer, uh, internally talks to the DAO, to the database, and it gives you a response back. And uh, the controller servlet, uh, it either includes another servlet as a view or includes or forwards uh, uh, the uh, forwards another JSP file um, in it. So, and this this uh, either the servlet view or the JSP view goes back to the to the to the browser. Right. So this is a typical view of a web application. All right. So uh, my code base is uh, available in a GitHub that is uh, a training dot Git. I'll share you this information or you can see this in this website itself. OK. All right. So let's uh, jump onto the code and uh, try to understand how we have uh, used this project to display the same thing. So I have created a Spring Boot application and uh, we know that we can go to start.spring.io to uh, create a uh, Spring Boot application. And the dependencies which I have used here is the Spring Boot Startup Web. I have used uh, Spring Boot Dev Tool. We are not going to use this one, in fact. Uh, internally, it comes with uh, the Tomcat uh, dependency. And uh, one thing I have added here is the Tomcat embedded Jasper because we need this to to tell the uh, container to uh, parse the JSP files. Okay, so, and I have used JSTL; it is not needed, but uh, I'll just show you if uh, uh, if you want to use it, we can we can use it as well. Okay, all right. So uh, the typical structure of this is you see there's a controller. Uh, folder out here or a package and we have got DAO, DAO layer, we have got uh, a model, service layer, a view layer. Now the important factor is that I have got two different views out here. One is uh, the servlet view which we will be using it as a response. Now let me just show you where I'm going to use this one. If you go back to the controller and uh, we know like controller is being accessed from a HTML file. So in this case, my HTML file is present in a static folder, and uh, the uh, the action is the name of the controller. And we have annotated all these servlets here, uh, like uh, annotated with a great web servlet and uh, gave, given the name of the servlet and the URL patterns also. And in this case, this is the one which has been used by the index.html file. And it's 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 nothing new. It's like the same old fashion of doing things. And in this case, uh, when I do a submit, uh, I am actually using the do post. It's been, I basically have used do get and do post, which are chained internally. And here, ultimately, the, the request comes to the do post method. And uh, if you see that, uh, I have used two conditions here, like if the employee ID is not null, then I come to this block of code, use a service layer to uh, make a database call, okay? And whatever I get it from the service layer, I put that in the request scope, request.set attribute by giving employee as the key and value as the employee info, which is actually the employee object. And I'm actually including the JSP file inside this, okay? And the other one is if I'm using the first name because there are two logic, uh, just to demonstrate this. If I'm giving the first name, I'm actually saying that I might have uh, multiple uh, first names. So I would like to use a 
uh, view which has got which we can use it for iterating list of employees okay so the main objective to of this example is that we would be using a, a jsp and a, a servlet also so here if you see on the left i have got one view which is a servlet by itself a class extends to http servlet and the uh, url pattern for this is employee list view this is the same thing i'm using i'm going to use it in my code out here so let me just show you that in the controller so this is the jsp and this is the servlet and if i want to show you the jsp this is the jsp where i and remember that we have to create a folder known as metainf.resources inside this we have to add the jsp file okay so this is the jsp file and uh, we have embedded the uh, the HTML along with the Java code. We know this is how you write the JSP code using scriptlets uh, uh, and, and whatnot. And here I've used JSTL. It is not necessary just to demonstrate, um, but you can directly use uh, the expressions out here. Okay, so uh, this is a typical structure. Let me quickly run this application and uh, show you. And let me show you if I have anything, the application.properties file. This is, uh, you don't have to give this one. And this is also not needed for a basic application, but I have used these two properties uh, to give the context path and the server port also, all right? And remember that uh, we need one of the property I was mentioning in the, in the, uh, in the initial uh, section, that we need this uh, Tomcat embed J Jasper, otherwise you would not be able to render your JSP files, all right? So let me quickly run this application and show you the output and we'll go from there. Okay, so in order to run this application, I would go to the um, Spring Boot server JSP application, uh, .java file. And one thing to remember, uh, which I have uh, not mentioned, that as we are, we know when we, create a Spring Boot application. Uh, this file comes by default uh, and we have this annotation also in place, right? But in order to have our servlets to be um, scanned, we need to use an annotation that is servlet component scan, which is necessary. Otherwise, your servlets will not be loaded by the container. So this, these annotations are being scanned by the servlet component scan. So this is important. And uh, if not, it's not gonna work. So remember that. All right, so let me just run this application real quick, right click and run this application. And let me just open up the browser. So the application is still building up. It's going to take some more time. All right, it's coming up now. So I'm not actually showing up the DAO layers. Uh, I believe I'm just mocking up the database by adding some static data. Uh, it's like uh, some information to the uh, to the map. I'm creating a map out here, but it's it's not a database call though out here. Okay. All right. So I think uh, the application is up and running. Uh, I'll just try to access that using localhost 8080. And if I just give an employee ID as 100 and do a submit. It gives me a response here. And uh, if I say a first name, let's see what first names I have it here. Uh, let's say I'm just gonna give it as a rod out here, R-O-D, do a submit, I get a response back as well, okay? So one is again, uh, just to reiterate, uh, if you give only the employee ID, it is going to use the JSP file. If you give uh, the first name, it is going to use a servlet uh, as as a response all right so that's all i had for this uh, 
short video folks and uh, thanks for watching this video if you like my video please do like and share and thank you very much for watching this one